like she's doing now and smack them down. Also swaying back and forth like that is actually kind of more of a defense mechanism. They look more like a leaf blowing in the wind. These guys main type of camouflage is to look like dried leaves in the treetops where they're eating all the different foliage. That's why they look all this nice and brown color. The spines on their bodies also make them a lot less palatable to any predators because it's just not as tasty to try and eat all these different spiny creatures. <laughs> the females will drop small eggs onto the forest floor with flicks of their abdomen. These eggs are covered with a substance that ants like to eat. And so they are carried into the nest by the ants. <laughs> these are the eggs and they're very small. The female will actually just flick her abdomen into the air and these will just slowly fall onto the forest floor while they'll hatch in about four months. specter will emerge and in order to get out of the nest they have to kind of disguise themselves as ants so the colony will not attack them. So this is a type of mimicry to look like the ants so that they can crawl out of the nest until they get up to the tops of the trees. They'll start looking more and more like the adults through subsequent molts which means they're shedding their outer exoskeleton. There are around 250,000 species of insects in Australia, with many of those being unnamed, unknown, and with very small distributions. They are particularly susceptible to natural disasters because of their small ranges and decreased ability to move. During the 2020 Australian wildfires, they were very susceptible to the flames because they couldn't outrun them like other animals could. This is actually a very big concern because it is estimated that more than a million insects probably died. Insects are kind of the bedrock of ecosystems because without them, a lot of the animals that we really love, such as reptiles, amphibians, birds, and mammals, could not survive. They need them to feed their young and also to survive themselves. 
We also have a species of stick insects here at the zoo that are not necessarily on display, and that is our native stick insect called a North American common walking stick. And they are the image you might have in your head of a, of a walking stick. It's just a very long, skinny, kind of gray stick with very long, spindly legs. You can find those in our core woods if you're very observant and careful. They are just wild, and they distribute their eggs the exact same way that the female Maclay specters do. Our second species of stick insect that we have here at the zoo and in our Australasian pavilion is our thorny devils. They are found in New Guinea, New Caledonia, and the Solomon Islands. They prefer warm, humid rainforests where they can be found on the leaf litter or foliage. Like all stick insects, they are strictly vegetarian. They are sexually dimorphic, just like the McClay specters. This means that the males and females look different. The males are smaller in length and width and have a large femoral spine. So that is a female and here is a male. He has recently died, unfortunately, but again, they don't live that long. It's very natural. The large femoral spine is actually this right here. It's a very large spine that they use when they feel threatened, just like the Maclay specters. They'll raise their back legs into the air and if anything touches their abdomen, they will then smack these down onto whatever is threatening them. Sometimes they release themselves right away, other times they continue to put pressure on whatever is bugging them. In New Guinea, these spines are actually used as fishing hooks. This is a female, and you can see that it is still covered in bumps, and is slightly larger and wider and about 15 centimeters in length. You can also tell it is a female by this long ovipositor here. She sticks this in the ground and an egg slides out into the soil, will remain for around four months until it hatches. While it looks like a stinger, it is really quite harmless. You may notice that some of our native insects you can find in your own backyard have what looks like a stinger. Often it is harmless and just a device used to help lay eggs in a specific spot. For instance, you can find them on female crickets. I'm going to show you some young thorny devils. These guys were hatched not that long ago and they're different sizes because they are different ages. So at first they're very small like the Maclay specters and again through different molds they'll get larger and larger. They're also different colors depending where what they have eaten. They need to shed their exoskeleton, which is also, which is their outer layer of skin, when it gets too constricting and tight. Their layer of skin beneath will then harden and become the exoskeleton. This is an old shed of a Maclay specter, and it's just really their outer shed of their skin. Unlike us, where our skin kind of comes off in flakes, they kind of have to unzipper from their skin and slowly crawl out. You may see crazy looking cicada sheds in the fall around your own house. These stick insects have evolved to look like bark or rotting logs, and it is where they all group together during the day for protection, emerging at night to eat. They also have very large mandibles, which is basically mouth chewing, which is basically what they use to chew their food and to crush vegetation. Like many stick insects, they can reproduce through male fertilization, or through a process called parthenogenesis. <laughs> this means that female can reproduce with any, without any males present, but the eggs are normally take longer to hatch and are all females. If you love our native animals, there is something quite easy that you can do for them, even during this special coronavirus time. The large green lawns that many people like are only slightly more useful to our natural environment than pavement. They actually do not help to support our native birds, reptiles, amphibians, and mammals that everyone loves very much. This is because chemicals and fertilizers are used on them and they don't consist of plants that our native insects can actually use. And it is our insects and plants that feed all those other animals. What would be a lot better for the animals that you love to see is to replace your lawn with native plants. They provide food and cover for insects and other animals. If you can't replace your lawn, 
Maybe plant only natives in your garden. Build a wildflower garden or make a potted wildflower garden on your apartment balcony. Wildflowers are great because they have evolved in our climate and so once established actually require less care than your lawns or non-natives. You won't have to water or fertilize them or add any different soil to your property. In the fall, you can leave the leaves and stems of the plant for insects to hibernate and for food and cover for birds. It's a one-time spring clean compared to weekly mowing during our precious summer and no plant expertise is required. Ontario has 23 insect species that are threatened, endangered, or extirpated, meaning they are already gone from Ontario. These are dragonflies, bumblebees, butterflies, and tiger beetles, and much more. Even planting a cup a clump of milkweed for monarch butterflies who have lost about 86% of their population in one year would be amazing. My favorite flowers are coneflowers, yarrow, and goldenrod. Goldenrod actually supports around 50 species of insects, including many bumblebees. Did you know that to raise one nest of songbirds takes around 5,000 to 9,000 insects? You can even help by petitioning your city to convert boulevards into wildflower meadows or your condo board to plant only native plants. Thank you for watching today and I hope I have inspired you to take action in your own backyard and start interest in our insect species.